Good morning everyone and welcome. We'll be waiting a few minutes past the hour to get started just to give everyone a chance to connect. Thank you. Good morning everyone and thanks for joining us today and being part of our community. We have some great content planned for you, but before we start, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. Feel free to ask questions at any time by typing in the IM window. Be aware that anything you post will be publicly visible. If you prefer, you can post questions anonymously by checking the box right below where you enter your question. We've had a large number of people registered for this webinar. As always, we're thrilled to see this level of interest. Please bear in mind, we might not be able to answer all your questions during the session. We will do our best to respond, all of them in real time, but I want to provide an additional mechanism to ensure any questions we miss get answered. If you visit aka.ms slash ASC community, you'll be able to ask questions on our Azure Security Center forum. If you're listening to this after the fact as a recording, this is also the place to ask a question as you'll see a dedicated post to webinar questions. We'll review the question transcript after this webinar and post future answers to that location. We are recording today's webinar and this will be shared publicly. We'll post the recordings on our community at aka.ms slash ASC recordings. Talking of community, if you're not already signed up, come and join us at aka.ms slash security community. This is the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars. It's also where we post major announcements and a place where you can interact directly with our engineering teams that are creating these security products. You'll be able to influence our product designs, get early access to changes by doing things like participating in private previews, requesting features, reviewing our roadmap, and attending in-person events and webinars like today. As I mentioned, we have some great content planned. Today's session is on Secure Score in Azure Security Center. I'd like to introduce you to our presenter today, Miri Landau. She's a senior member of our Azure Security Center team. She has a deep expertise in this topic. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to her. Mary. Yeah, hi everyone and thanks for joining. Um, today I will uh, talk a little bit about cloud security posture management capabilities in Azure Security Center and focusing specifically on Secure Score. 
We will discuss how the how the capabilities in Security Center can make the security admin and CISO work easier. Uh, what is Secure Score? A little bit about the current model and the upcoming changes that uh, we want to bring to the model. How you can improve your Secure Score? How you can manage policy in the organization? Uh, I'll do a little demo and then leave some time for questions. So let's begin. So now I will cover um, in a um, small illustration how the security admin works today and how we can uh, um, make his uh, work more effective and more easier with Azure Security Center. So today, uh, when the Contessa CISO asked the security team to define a security strategy for the company, this is quite a challenging job. The security architects need to learn the security landscape and the ongoing threats. He needs to create a list of security controls and configuration that he needs to apply. He needs to come up with his policy. He needs to triage it and on an ongoing basis, he needs to maintain that to add more and more controls, more and more security configuration. And the landscape keeps changing. More and more resources are being added. He constantly needs to understand what the resource held in the organization, and that's an ongoing task. Then he, of course, wants to improve the, improve the security health and he needs to deploy some changes. He needs to write scripts, he needs to test them, he needs to gradually deploy them. And um, that's not um, such an easy task that you need ongoing monitoring for that to be in place. Eventually, you want to make report, you want to show progress, you want to see that your security posture was improved, and for that you also need to create manually reports that uh, um, you can show. So all in all, um, you can see that there are some main pain points because um, you, there is no continuous assessment in place, there is no automatic security baseline in place, you need to update it uh, on an ongoing ba basis. You need to maintain that because new resources and new threats are coming. There is no visibility to the security posture, no easy way to track progress, and no automatic remediation that you can place. So we are aware and identified to all these pain points, and we want to help our security admins. So let's see how Security Center can help you with these tasks. So now when you are being asked to define a security strategy for your organization, you using the SEC admin uses as a security center. Out of the box, all the subscription get a default security policies that within minutes analyzes all the resources and you can see the security posture, you can see the security health for all your Azure resources according to that policy. You can also adjust the policy if you see that some of the configuration may not fit your environment, if you're using other tools or just not applicable. And you can also add your custom organizational policies if you want. Then all this policy, all this configuration are basically translated into what we call recommendations. These recommendations are already come prioritized and you can understand what would be the impact if you would fix that because we give you a score for each one of them and also a total score, which we call secure score. So you have a number now and you can understand how much secure I am and you can also compare with other subscription which have the same policy. Then you have an ongoing visibility. So if you have new resources that are coming or or an our library of policies is also is live and is being updated constantly with new configuration. Now, when you want to remediate and deploy a fix, you have natively in par as part of the portal a one click fix feature, which you can just select um, the resources that you want to apply the change to. You can do it gradually and with this fix, you can see what would be the impact. If you find that um, it is good enough, then you can also do and enforce the security configuration. So upon an update or or creation of a resource, this configuration would already be applied. With all of these tools in place, now the CISO see that the company security posture improved thanks to the awesome team and the tools that empower them. Everything becomes much more easier. So, to summarize all that we've seen now, um, these are kind of uh, represent the life cycle 
of um, the security posture management. We start with a security center policy, which is automatically assigned. So there's nothing you need to do. Basically, if you're using Azure portal, you just go in and you just see immediately the results. There is no uh, onboarding that, that requires to be done. Then you can see the visibility to your resource health. You can see the secure score posture because we calculate for each one of the recommendation what would be the impact, what is your secure score, and I'll deep dive to that in a few minutes. You can remediate and prevent, remediate existing resources that are unhealthy and prevent it from happening again on new resources. You have some reporting and export capabilities that you can um, share and you can extend the default policy with your own custom policies uh, and have the all this cycle with your own policies. Now let's dip a little a little bit more into the secure score. What's the concept? What stands behind it and how we calculate it? So what is secure score? Secure score is a measurement of an organization's security posture with a higher number indicating lower risk. So as you can see on the right image, we give you a score 508 out of 950. 950 is your potential. You see that you are kind of in half, meeting half of your potential in this case. What's good in giving a number is basically that you can report on this number you can compare. Once you have this number, then you can compare. You can know which, which, where you are doing better, which subscription needs more attention. And you can also set a KPIs and show progress on this number. This is our main overview dashboard in Security Center. I will, in the demo, I will review each one of the sections, but what I wanna emphasize here, you can see the security score as you go into the portal. We are also su supporting multiple subscriptions. So here in this case, this is you see the secure score for two subscription. You can see the status of your subscription right ahead. And you can also go to the dedicated secure score blade where you can see for each one of your subscription, you can see the secure score. You can also see the accumulative secure score. And soon we will also provide you secure score for management group. Management group basically is the capability to group, group few subscription um, under a management group so you can manage them as a unit and you can apply policies as a unit and you can then have a score for all the subscription as a unit. So when you want to click, when you click on one of the subscription, because you want to understand, OK, so how did I get to 241 uh, score? You basically get the list of recommendation. This list of recommendation is basically the representation of the of the default security policies that were applied on your subscription and were evaluated on your resources automatically. Um, here you can see the, this recommendation for the unhealthy resources that needs attention. So for example, on the first line, we see that you need to apply MFA on account with owner permission, and you have one of one subscription that needs attention. And you can see that if you do that, then you'll gain 50 points. That's the plus 50. This list is prioritized, as you can see. So now I know exactly how do I need to react? What do I need to do first to increase my security this is prioritized list and going in and what uh, today basically we cover um, we have something around 100 security configuration that come out of the box and we constantly adding more and more security configuration. The way basically that we see Azure Security Center is a one stop shop for all the security recommendation that you can have um, in Azure. This is, of course, an ongoing process to enrich more and more our uh, our uh, uh, default policy. And we help you to prioritize and focus on what's more important um, so you can understand which configuration you must apply, which are might be optional or non-mandatory. And we have different categories that we cover. You can see here we have access, which for access and management, 
which are focusing about uh, managing a subscription, enabling MFA. We have on compute resources, all kind of configuration on VMs, uh, app services and so on. We have on SQL databases and storage. We have a lot of networking recommendations and on app services recommendation. And each one of them has score. So you can understand exactly what are your vulnerabilities and what is your overall secure score in a minute. Now we get to the point, uh, we showed it for each one of the recommendation, we give you a point, but how is it being calculated? So each recommendation has a max score. This is your maximum potential. If you solve it, this is the number of points that you will get. And each healthy resources will get points. So uh, if you want to know what is your current score, basically it's the number of healthy resources out of total resources, double the max score will give you the current score. And I will show an example in a minute. So to know your overall subscription score is basically to sum up all the recommendation current score. So if we go to this example, here you can see um, um, how recommendation looks in the system. In this case, we have auditing on SQL servers should be enabled. You can read the description of this recommendation. You can see some general information to which threat it can mitigate, it, it can block. What are the remediation steps, what you can do to fix that? And I will deep dive into this section a little bit later. And what are the affected resources? Here you can see how many unhealthy and healthy resources you have for this specific recommendation. Going back now to the recommendation score, you see that you get two out of five. Five is the maximum score that we've decided that this recommendation should give you. So because you have two healthy resources, then you got two points out of five. And if you will fix the remaining three unhealthy, then you will get plus three points. And this is the recommendation impact. So it's quite straightforward and quite simple calculation. Now, this model is running for a while and we would like to um, have to enhance it. And I would like to share with you now, what are we going on? How do we think that we can make it even better than it is today? So the concept that we want to do is we want to group recommendations together. So if today we had score for per each individual recommendation, now we want to trans tr we want to move to a model where related or dependent recommendations are grouped into a logical concept which we call security control. And only these security controls will be scored. In a minute, I'll explain why, but let's look, for example, here in the conceptual mock. You see now that we have controls. These are the buckets, enable MFA, secure management ports, auditing and logging on logging in this example, and we'll have more. Only these items have now score and underlying it, these are the recommendation. The recommendation basically are how to implement this security control. If I want to enable MFA, then I need to do ABC, which are the underlying recommendation. If I want to do secure my management port, then I need to associate an NSG with a virtual machine. I need to configure the management port or alternatively, I can apply just in time network access. But what I want to do basically is secure management ports and that's, uh, that's my goal. That's what I get points for. And that brings me to why we why we thinking that this model is better and what's the benefits of it. So security control represent a complete unit of actions to complete a security configuration. Like in the example that I, met, I that I mentioned, you need to install an energy and you need to close management ports. We do not want to give you points if you do only part of the work. We want to give you you want to give you point on the com on completion of this security configuration as a whole. Another example, for example, for another example is um, install system update. You need to install and you need to do also afterwards to do restart. These two together are a complete unit, and we want to uh, and we want you to do both of them because one is a pre and sometimes prerequisite for the other. So we group all of these together. This grouping also helps because it's now it's better represent a scope 
and, and probability of an attack, they, it will be easier to do a correlation basically between, between this, the configuration that I need to do. For example, um, secure my management ports and through related attack. And that's where we want to, um, uh, of course, uh, take forward um, this understanding of which configuration against which threats I am protect this would protect me from. And the last thing is that it focuses customers on areas that needs improvement. So instead now of having, having an overwhelming list of maybe 100 recommendations that uh, sometimes to complete, again, to complete my security actions, I need to go through and jump between different recommendations that I don't see the connection between them. Now it is grouped together and I can understand where is my area that I need improvement. For example, if I have a low score on auditing and logging, then I know that this is somewhere that I need to focus more or uh, maybe on my endpoint protection or so on because now I can have a score per each area and I can know where, where is my weak, uh, weakness points. So how did we do that? Basically, we took all the recommendations that we have today, we bucket them um, into the secure controls. Um, we will not go through this list, but that's kind of give you the sense of, uh, of the control. And this is, uh, for example, if I'll take apply system updates, then you can see that there are several steps for that to happen. Um, you need monitoring agent, you need to install, you need to restart all of this needs to be completed for you to apply system updates. Um, what, what's uh, important to say that for you to get the score, you need for the same resource to be healthy for each one of the recommendations in this control. So in this case, for example, for a certain VM to be considered healthy for this control, you need to complete all the three steps, monitoring agent, install, system update and restart your machine to complete that. OS version is for like a different resource for a cloud service. This is a different one. Then for this specific resource, it only needs to comply to this specific recommendation. And I'll explain a, a little bit now in more, uh, more details in few slides when I'll explain the calculation logic. So this is the summary of the secure scope control as of today. Um, this is of course, uh, dynamic list and this might change. This is still uh, we are in a, uh, finalizing the model, but basically you can see that we have list of uh, control. Each one of them is uh, uh, represent a security configuration, enable MFA, secure management ports, remediate vulnerabilities, uh, apply system updates, enable advanced threat protection, uh, manage access and permission, restrict access to or from public internet, remediate security configuration, um, such as an OS and uh, SQL, uh, adaptive application control, encryption of data in transit uh, and, and REST, enable endpoint protection, DDoS and VNet, data classification, and enable auditing and logging. And they are sorted by their priority and importance. And re as I mentioned before, um, Azure Security Center uh, would want to cover all, this, all the resources in Azure, have all the security configuration. There might be cases that some security configuration uh, might not be scored because they might not be that important or they might be optional. This is also an option. And we also want to introduce a new concept which called grace period. Uh, Every time that we will add more and more recommendation to the system, we understand that you want your environment and your secure score to be uh, stable. So we want to gradually change your score as we introduce new recommendations. So you will have time to look at um, the configuration to understand whether you need to apply any change so it would not affect your score immediately but you will still know that you have some misconfiguration that you need to, to take attention upon. And that's something that we call grace period that would come. So what will be the new calculation logic? So now that we move from the concept of having score per recommendation to score per control, now the control has a max score. Each one of the resources that evaluated against this control will get point only 
if it passed all the recommendation in the same control. So resource will be considered healthy only if it complies to all the recommendation in the same control. And the formula is quite simple. The number of healthy resources for all the recommendation in the control uh, out of total resources in the control doubled by the max score will give you the current score. And I'll show an example in a minute. The overall subscription score is again the sum of the controls current score. So for example, in the apply system update, let's say that maximum you can get three points because there are three steps that you need to do in order to get the point. These are dependent action on one each other. You need a monitoring agent, you need to install system updates and you need to restart. If you have five VMs and you have three points, then each resource can contribute either zero or six and you'll get the six only if you meet you met all these three recommendations. Same goes, for example, for a control. This control enable ATP. It has again 30 points. This is uh, it has two recommendation. One recommendation is to enable advanced data security on SQL and the other one is to enable monitoring agent for virtual machine. These two uh, will will um, basically um, are for enabling advanced threat protection, but they are on different resources. So in this case, for example, again, if I have 10 resources, five from each type and maximum 30 points, each machine can contribute three points or zero or three points. In this case, the evaluation would be only on the recommendation that is relevant. So on SQL Server, I evaluate against the SQL recommendation on virtual machine against the virtual machine, and each, each one of them will contribute the score um, that it can give, and in this case, three points or zero uh, if it's unhealthy. So I hope that, uh, that the model is clear. I want to show you a little bit how would it be look like in the user experience in the portal. So now when I go to the recommendation blade where this is the blade where I see all the recommendation, then now I can see the buckets, I can see the security controls. Um, you can see that I have for each one of them, um, I have the score. You can see here ASC default, which is the default policy. We are also supporting custom policy. I will cover it a little bit later. This is your option to add your own custom policies and uh, you will be able to see it here. And also we uh, plan in our roadmap also to be extendable to third party to integrate with other security recommendation systems. So you can also leverage the same portal to see this security recommendation as well. Everything is grouped under control. Everything has a score. You, need, you exactly know where you need to focus. When you open the control, you can see the list of recommendations that you need to uh, that you need to apply. And we also suggest we also suggest you if there is alternatives, if you can do that and that, or maybe have an alternative fix, as example, the just-in-time network access that can replace configure and management ports on uh, NSGs. So everything is exposed to you and you can choose where, what you want to do and how you want to apply the configuration. This is now the security posture blade. If the previous slide was about, okay, that this is the to-do list, what is, are the security configurations that I need to do? Um, this is like my working um, sheet. This one is basically the security posture. Now I want to understand what is my organizational posture I get, I go to this blade. On I first, I see that I'm on 65%. We are moving from number to percentage because percentage represent better where I am according to my potential and also allows you to compare with different subscription once it's uh, once it's on as a percentage. You can also see um, on the right the secure score or in the middle the secure score over time. Uh, we understand that customer wants to know whether they increase or decrease their security over time. So we will allow this graph. And here you can see also the resource held by control, which of the controls I need to pay attention. So you can see it in here. On the bottom, we have the organizational status. You can see the hierarchy 
Um, you can see the hierarchy of your organization, the different subscription and their score. We will also provide a score on the manage group on the management group level. So if your manager subscription in a hierarchy mode and you can see the accumulative view. And we also provide you insight and improvement. What happened recently? Uh, what made the change that I gained more score or I regressed? Then we want to bring you with this visib visibility. So all of this is, of course, in our roadmap and it uh, might be open to some changes, but this is the concept. This is where we're heading. OK, um, so a few words about roadmap. Um, if some of you are, um, are familiar, we have Microsoft Secure Score portal. This is a portal where you can see um, in your organization in the different pillars such as identity, data, device and app. Um, um, we also being going to be integrated into this um, portal, so you will have a holistic view of the security posture across your organization and across Office 365. Um, we are going to in be integrated in the infrastructure pillar. So all the security controls and the summary of the tenant level security posture would be um, available here in the infrastructure. So everything would be in this one portal. And from this, you will be able also to navigate into Azure Security Center. And this is, of course, the, what I've mentioned before. We keep hearing more and more from customers that they want to monitor and want to understand what happened, what changes cause, caused in the secure score. So we would want to provide uh, with the ability to know that, to, to be able to um, know the root cause analysis of the secure score changes. And we also going to provide a secure score API so you can programmatically um, get this data. And if you want, then also build your own dashboards um, and so on. So now that you have secure score, how can we make it easier for you to improve your secure score? So, um, Lately, we introduced the single click remediation. It's the ability basically um, to, in a click, to remediate bulk of resources. And it's uh, native to Azure ecosystem. You can do it very quickly. You can test it gradually. You, so you can pick at the beginning one or two resources. If you see that the impact as you, as you expected, then you can select all resources and do it in a one click. And that's easier now for you to improve your secure score. So as of today, uh, not all the recommendations are, are, are one are remediable in one click, but we have uh, but we have uh, many that you can do that. So I recognize them by this one click fix badge. I click on the on the ones that have this badge. In this case, it's secure transfer to storage account should be enabled. I can see all the unhealthy storage account. In this case, I've selected two resources. A context blade is opened. I can see exactly what would be the implication if I will apply that. And I can click on the remediate. And in a few minutes, it would appear in the healthy resources. That's it, done. Uh, what's behind the scene, basically under the hood, what we're doing here is either applying a template deployment um, that sets this configuration or doing it through REST APIs, but that's quite simple because now you don't need to write your own scripts. Um, this is just in, uh, in, in one click. We also encourage you to visit our GitHub repository. You have the link on the bottom of the screen. Um, in this GitHub re repository, uh, there will be some automation samples, how to remediate recommendation through logic apps or to Azure policy through deploy or deny. For which of one of you that uh, that familiar with that, there is a concept where you can say that upon creation or update of, uh, of a resource, you can apply a policy, say that this would only be deployed with this configuration. Uh, so for several recommendations we have in the repository as of today, deploy and deny policies. And we will also make a better connection from the portal itself. So in a click of a button, you will be able to apply 
these prevention policies. So not only fixing existing existing unhealthy resources, but also preventing new resources from becoming unhealthy. And this is GitHub repository. Uh, we will we'll also allow somewhere um, in the near future for you also to contribute and uh, to contribute your own scripts. And we uh, will build a whole community around that so you can contribute and you can also um, leverage some of the existing items that will be added on an ongoing basis there. Uh, okay, so policy management. A little bit about policy because eventually um, cloud, cloud posture management relies on the fact that there, are poli that there is a policy in place. We are using as infrastructure Azure policy. Uh, when you go into Azure Security Center, each one of your subscription that you um, entered in the portal are automatically uh, being assigned with a default initiative that contains all the policies. All the policies are basically all the recommendations that you will see. And there is no maintenance required because when we add new recommendation, they are going seamlessly into this initiative and you can see them in the portal. Um, and that's the, uh, the big benefit because as more and more new resources and new past services are coming to Azure, uh, we are supporting these new these new configuration and they they will this will be added seamlessly. Um, you can also disable some of your recommendation um, if you find that they are not applying um, to you. We support management group. As I mentioned earlier, you can decide whether you want to manage subscription as a unit. We encourage you to do that. That's the better way to manage policy in an organization. And in that case, you can also we you can visualize in Azure Security so uh, Center portal management group. We will also provide you secure scores I mentioned on the management group. And um, that's a better way to do that. And now I want to talk a little bit about a very exciting um, feature that we released to private preview recently and, and hopefully soon will be public and available for all. We understand that some customers have their own policies. Uh, maybe they want to change a little bit our current logic for existing ones or they want to write their own policies and we now uh, allow that. So if you have already a custom policy um, initiative in Azure policy, now in a click of a button, you can onboard it to Azure Security Center from the security policy blade. Um, you can click on add custom initiative. That would basically add this initiative in Azure Security Center, which basically will be translated into a new recommendation. All the recommendation, all the policies that are in this custom initiative will be transformed seamlessly to recommendation in the same recommendation blade, which is called, which will be tagged as custom. Um, in the future, when we move to the control based model, then all these will be under a control and you will be in the future also can, um, can set the desired score that you want for these custom policies. So this is a very, um, a very important capability because now we basically extending Azure Security Center for your own policies and also in the future to third party policies. And you can all monitor everything in one place. Regulatory compliance. Regulatory compliance is a additional pillar uh, in Azure Security Center. Um, for customers that are interested in regulatory compliance, there are many compli there are many standards. Um, today, out of the box, there are four standards, Azure CIS, PCI, ISO, and SOC TSP. Um, if you are on a standard tier, then out of the box, basically, all your resources will be assessed according to these four um, regulatory compliance. And uh, we understand that there are more and more standards and we will support new standards and you will be easily be able to onboard these new standards. Very similar experience to what I showed before. 
you can um, click on the security policy blade, you can click on add more standards. Uh, we are in the preview, we introduced NIST and UK official and UK NHS, and we are constantly working on adding more and more standard policies and that you will be able to visualize and also create reports to understand and that would help you in the compliance uh, process. So um, I covered um, all the main uh, capabilities of cloud security posture, um, starting from the policy management, the, vi the visualization of the resource health, the ability to remediate, uh, to remediate resources and to get a secure score which you can improve over time and you can measure. So let's jump into uh, a demo. So uh, for ones of you that are um, not familiar with Azure Security Center, this is Azure Security Center is part of the Azure uh, portal. You have this green icon on the left. Once you click on this, on the subscription that you selected in the filter, then you can, um, in a minute, you can see what is your um, security status. That's because under the scene, we have assigned to this subscription the default policy. Under the hood, we starting to assess all the resources that you have in this subscription according to that policy, so you can visualize here the results. So uh, the dashboard divided into basically three strips. The first one is policy and compliance. You can see your overall secure score. You can see uh, your score against regulatory compliance, how many uh, failed and passed controls you have. And we have free and standard tier. This is a good um, uh, point to explain that all the features that I've mentioned so far, uh, the ability to have the default policy, the recommendation, the security, all the security posture, all of that are coming for free in the free tier, except for regulatory compliance, which is standard tier. Um, so you can get here visibility of how many subscriptions are fully or how many are partially. The second strip here, you can see the recommendations, how many security configuration basically I have, uh, in which severity, in which areas uh, I have more recommendation or more fixes to apply, whether it's compute or I see here that my actually my networking resources are quite good. Um, and the last strip that I would not cover in this section is talking about threat protection. This is about security alerts, about incidents that we identify uh, on the resources itself and you, we provide you with alerts. This is another major pillar in the product um, that we have today. I'm going now to the secure score blade. That's the blade where um, uh, I, get the, um, I get the view of my organizational health and I can route back to see the recommendations. If I click again, I get to the recommendation blade. This is the, my to-do list. This is where I see the list of all the recommendations that I have in place, uh, prioritized. Um, in this case, I can see that, uh, oh, there are a few that I can get points quickly. I can raise my score. Um, I click on web application should be only accessible over HTTPS. Within a few minutes, I will be able to fix that. Isn't that great? Um, we have the one click fix. If I want to do it manually, then I also have a manual way. Uh, we also introduce you if you uh, want to understand what exactly what would be would be the remediation logic that uh, you can apply. Then we also uh, expose you with the deployment with what properties are we going to change. In this case, you can see that we will change the property HTTP as only to be true. Now I have more confidence what the system will apply. I scroll down. I see I have here in this case two unhealthy resources. I decided I want to fix both of them. I click on remediate. And now I understand what will be the implication of this remediation. Uh, I can read here the details. I can click remediate and um, everything. It says it's in progress and in a few minutes the issue will be fixed. 
This is a very powerful feature because it allows me to do this misconfiguration quite quickly. Um, I want you to notice that you can we you can submit feedback and we are looking for your feedback, um, evaluating your feedback. So please do that. You have it on each one of the recommendations. Uh, one last thing that I want to um, show you is um, the new feature about uh, custom policy. Um, OK, so if I want to now add my own policy, I go to security policy, to the security policy blade. Here again, I can see all my management group, all my subscriptions. Uh, I take one of the subscription to which I want to add my custom policy. This is a new blade that we introduce. It's divided into three sections. I see I can see here all the policies that assign to this subscription, the security center default policy, all the built in industry and regulatory standards that I have out of the box. And here I can also add my custom initiative. In this case, I already created an initiative uh, which has policies. I can decide if I want to add more and here basically there is there is no uh, custom initiative I can go and create new and this would be added and reflected as recommendations later in my system. So that's about it. Uh, a quick uh, quick peek at regulatory compliance. Um, let's wait for it to come up um, until then. Um, you can see that we divide our recommendation um, today into the different section. If I want to see only recommendations that apply to compute and apps, then I can go to here. Uh, if I'm interested in networking, then I can click on the networking tab. We also support IoT hubs and resources if you happen to have that. We have data storage and identity and access. Um, let's look at this web page. Maybe it will come up a little bit faster. OK, so um, I think with that, I'm done with the demo. Uh, and we have some time for questions. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, Thank you, Mira. So the team so have the been team very team effective uh, in the chat for questions, and the majority, I think, have been answered and answered quite well. Uh, I've been making notes <laughs> of questions that would be good to ask that had been raised, but you've covered them. <laughs> so I think one that would be interesting, and it's it's going to be see if we can meet uh, beats my time answering is the question here is can you undo a one click remediation? So today we do not have the undo capability in place. Um, you can, we all, always provide you with manual steps, so you can manually do that. You can also look in the activity log and see what exactly was configured. Uh, but at this point, we don't have an automated way for an undo. Cool. Uh, and look, the main two that I had, you covered off really well, which there seems to be a question came up a lot from uh, from the chat was around where secure score in ASC fits into Office 365 secure score. I think you cover that off really well and the ability to get that single view, but also pivot into the secure score portal as well. So, um, and then everything was around um, what other policies do we support around compliance and you know industry and, and you've covered that off really well as well. So I don't have anything really to add here. There's no new questions at the moment. So, you know, I think we'll just we'll perhaps pause for a few more seconds and see if anyone wants to rush in their questions. Um, but other than that, I can't see anything else to ask at the moment. And in any case, feel, please feel free to contact me at muriel at microsoft.com and I'll be happy to answer all your questions. Yep, so look, there's nothing new coming to the queue. So with that, let, let's um, let's wind the session up. I will just post in the announcements. Um, 
So thanks, Mary and team on the call for helping answer all the questions. I think it was a really great session today. It was very enlightening. Um, some final reminders. You can find the recordings at aka.ms slash ASC recordings. If you haven't already joined that community, um, you can see it on the slide as well, aka.ms slash security community. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for everyone uh, for being part of our community and we hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much.